My favourite amine nutrients, uh, apart from vitamin D and zinc, um, are actually, is actually vitamin C. And um, vitamin C is really important for our immune system. Um, it's also important to stress that actually us and fruit bats can't produce our own vitamin C in times of need and, and in times of stress. So dogs, for example, if they actually have an infection or they, they, would, they would hurt themselves, the body would actually start to produce vitamin C to help start working on that, that bacteria, microbes, um, infection, anything like that, or if the dog was sick in some kind of other way. Um, so we have to get vitamin C from our diet and we have to put that in every single day. Um, we haven't really understood vitamin C necessarily for that long in terms of nutritional history. And I guess in the last kind of 10 or 20 years, there's been more of a fashion for having synthetic vitamin C, so ascorbic acid or things like calcium ascorbate, uh, things like ester C. These are all synthetic vitamin C, so they don't come from food. We're moving into a different era now, and certainly for me, as a naturopathic nutritional therapist, I prefer to use with my clients and recommend to friends and family and students a food state vitamin C. So this might be a product that is designed as a food state vitamin C, so it's concentrated food, or literally using food that you find in plants and herbs and obviously food, food you know, vegetables and fruits. These kinds of vitamin Cs uh, have been shown in research to be retained in the body for up to 48 hours whereas ascorbic acid goes really out of the body quite quickly. Um, it's much harder for us to use it and store it. And while using um, food sources of vitamin C, of course you get natural bioflavonoids that are already present in the food and plants, and they also offer us immune support as well. Um, some of my favourite uh, vitamin C foods include elderberries, so any kind of berries really, but elderberries are great. Also, rose hip. With the elderberry and the rose hip, Jill's covered the other aspects there. So, if you use those as a food source of vitamin C, you'd get all those other immune modulating, immune supporting, anti inflammatory components. Um, Camu Camu comes from South America, and that is their berry that they use for their highest source of vitamin C. We've also got Acerilla cherry, which we kind of use more sometimes here in the rest of Europe. Um, Acerilla is a particular type of cherry where the vitamin C content is actually at the highest, but you could also use other cherries as well. Quite a few supplements um, are often produced from Acerilla cherry, for example. We've also got parsley and kale leaves, lemons and oranges, that's more commonly known. Rosemary leaves, which is probably kind of uncommonly known. And we do have pine needles. Pine needles, I think, is actually um, the strangest thing on the list, but I have a nice story for you. So when English and Scottish and Irish people first went to North America, they'd been on ships, obviously, for months and months and months. This is way before we have, obviously, a very, very quick flight over. And unfortunately, they didn't understand very much about nutrition and things. And vitamin C, again, is, is quite a new discovery in terms of understanding needing vitamin C to prevent something called scurvy. So these, um, these settlers were actually very sick with scurvy. And the Native American Indians actually made them a tea with these pine needles, this little, little, little needles on here, with these pine needles. And they drank the tea, and they actually started to get better. The, the, the scurvy started to go away. Um, obviously, now we know that we would need to include vitamin C every day to prevent scurvy, but that was a really interesting story. And this was not from something that you would normally think has vitamin C in it. So pine is, is fantastic. So you could, make, you could collect uh, your own pine needles and make, make a tea yourself every day, um, which would be tasty.